When we moved into our new home last summer, the front porch definitely needed a makeover. The paint on the door and the surrounding trim was faded and scuffed. The door hardware was tarnished and that tacky brass color that's always on builder grade homes. The siding was covered with dirt and spider webs and our front porch concrete was really stained and dirty. The landscaping was overgrown with weeds everywhere. Our porch ceiling light looked really dirty and old, not to mention the wasp nest that's on the ceiling that we just haven't had time to deal with. It was looking so dreary to me though, and I just couldn't stand it every time I walked to our front door, which was multiple times a day. So this summer, we decided to give it a makeover. I didn't want to spend a lot on this makeover, so here's what we did to make it over on a budget. Brandon is starting with the overgrown landscaping and clearing it all out. I'm not a big fan of landscape work, especially in the summer heat, but luckily Brandon actually likes this kind of yard work, so I'm happy to let him handle it. Another benefit to clearing out all of this brush is that we won't have any lizards hiding in it much anymore. Here in Charleston, there are a lot of lizards and I really can't stand them, so I'm looking forward to not having lots of hiding spots for them around my front porch. With the overgrown brush gone, Brandon is getting the porch cleared off with the blower. And a fun fact about this blower is that it's actually from the 1970s. It was Brandon's grandmother's blower and it still works really well. Isn't that crazy? Our porch and siding is really dirty and stained. So the next step is to power wash it. And we actually don't own a power washer, so we're borrowing Brandon's dad's power washer to do this. I feel like power washing is one of the most satisfying things. Does anybody else feel that way? This isn't the most high powered power washer, but it's doing a good enough job to get most of the dirt off. Unfortunately though, it's not getting all of the stains off like I was hoping it would. Maybe we can try painting the concrete or something like that in the future, but I have no idea how durable that would be though. I've never painted concrete before. So if you have ever done that, let me know what you think about it. With the power washing finished, I think the porch looks so much better. It just looks fresher and cleaner and a lot less dark. Now that we have a blank slate here with a power washed porch and all the landscaping cleared out, we can move on to more of the fun makeover stuff. The first project we're going to tackle is updating our outdated light fixture on the porch. I also bought two new lanterns to replace our old light fixture, which was just really dated and super rusted out. So I have been really wanting to do a pretty hanging lantern, but I wasn't quite sure which size was going to work best with our porch. Uh, so I got a bigger one and a matching smaller one. So I'm just gonna check those out and hold them up out over the front porch and see which one looks best scale wise so I can figure out which one to install. So I absolutely love both of these lanterns. They are so cute. I don't know which size though, so I'm gonna go hang this up on the front porch and see which one looks better. Let me know in the comments what you think if we should go with the smaller one or the bigger one. So let's test these out. Brandon is holding up each lantern here so I can see which one looks best. Right away, I'm really liking the larger lantern, but it is more expensive than the smaller one and I'm not sure if it's too big. I'm gonna try holding these up and see what Brandon thinks. After us both testing these lanterns out, I think we're gonna go with the bigger one. I just really love how it looks scale-wise with the porch. 
Brandon's dad is here today to install the lantern for us. He's really great with all things electrical, so he is going to get started with taking this old rusted out light down and install the new lantern. But before we can finish this lighting project, we need to deal with this wasp nest on our ceiling. After power washing, they started rebuilding their nest and so I think we need to spray them with something, but I don't want to do any of those toxic sprays. So I'm going to try a more natural method of spraying them with some vinegar and water. I read about this on a Google search. Thankfully, Brandon's dad is going to try this out for us and see how it goes. With the wasp nest gone again, Brandon's dad, Stephen, can start installing the new lantern. I'm a little worried it's going to be too low, but Steven is about six feet tall and he has like an eight inch clearance with it. So hopefully it's going to be okay because I really love this larger lantern compared to the smaller one. While Steven finishes up installing the lantern, I'm going to lay some weed barrier fabric down and Brandon's going to run to Lowe's to get some mulch and pea gravel. Although I'm not a huge fan of landscaping, I don't mind laying some weed barrier, especially if it's going to help keep the weeds under control. I do not like weeding. It's like one of my least favorite things to do. For our front door, I'm going to be adding a fresh coat of paint to both the door and the white trim around it. I do like the black color on it, but I'm going to freshen it up with a new black paint color that I love using on doors called Tricorn Black by Sherwin-Williams. I use this on our faux barn door at our old house, and I think it looks really sharp on doors, especially with a matte black hardware. And speaking of hardware, I bought a really beautiful new hardware set for our deadbolt lock and handle. I found it on Amazon and I'll link it below in the description box under this video, but I love how it looks. It's really modern. So I'm going to open that and see how it looks and kind of figure out just how we're going to install it. Okay. Oh my gosh, I love it. So it's just nice and modern, but still classic and timeless at the same time. And then I got the matching doorknob for the other side. So I really love this new hardware, but before we can figure out how to install it, first I have to paint our front door. Before starting the painting of our front door, I am going to hang a sheet up over the front door. So while I'm painting it, I can leave it open for a few hours and that way it helps to keep like any flies or bugs out while I'm painting and also maybe try to keep some of the air conditioning inside so it doesn't all go out the front door. Thankfully, I have some clamps from all of my DIY projects that are going to work well for doing this. I'm starting with the first cut of paint and just cutting everything in with a brush first before rolling it on. Painting your front door is one of the easiest and least expensive ways to make over your front porch. Paint always makes such a big difference. Although I'm painting my black door with black paint, I still think it's going to look really nice with this tricorn black paint color, especially since the current black paint is really faded. It's just going to look really nice with a fresh coat of paint. Our golden retriever, Chance, he loves to be part of every DIY project that we do, and he's always getting paint on his fur, but hopefully he won't get this black paint on him too much since it'll really stand out. I'm going to let this first coat of paint dry and help Brandon with laying the pea gravel down. I originally wanted to put a light white gray river rock down in front of our porch, 
but after calling our local hardscape center, apparently River Rock is super popular and it was not in stock. So we had to settle with the pea gravel that was available at Lowe's. Gosh, it was so rich. Looking at this pea gravel here, I'm super nervous about how red it is and it's just really not the color I was envisioning and I hope this is going to look okay. Brandon and Steven are telling me that it's going to wash off all this red stuff and look a lot lighter and better. So I'm hoping they're right. It's time to finish off the front door with a second coat of paint. looking a lot better with the second coat of paint. I can't wait to see it all dry in the natural light once we take the sheet down off of our front door. Now that our paint is all dry, Brandon can install our new door hardware. I'm beyond excited about this new hardware. The only drawback to this style hardware though is that we have to drill a hole through the door for the bottom of the handle to attach to it. This is super nerve wracking because we don't want to have to replace our front door or have a crooked door handle. Brandon assured me though that he measured twice before drilling. And thank goodness everything lines up and it's level. The last step before we can start decorating is to paint the white trim around the door. Again, this might seem like a subtle thing to do, but I think it's really going to make the porch look fresh and elevated. I would love to replace our front door and surrounding frame for a more modern door and a frame that doesn't have windows on each side, but it's really expensive and it's a project that we would have to hire out. So fresh paint and hardware is the best budget-friendly solution for us right now that we can do ourselves in just a day. It's time to start adding all of the finishing touches. I'm really excited about this new planner set I found. With our time crunch, I wanted to find a planner set available with two day shipping on Amazon, but I also wanted them to be budget friendly. I wasn't sure if I was going to have any luck because, well, nice large outdoor planners are usually really heavy and pricey. After an extensive two night search though, and reading a lot of reviews, I decided to order this beautiful three piece set of concrete planners that are actually lightweight. And they're also really budget friendly for the set of three. I will link them below this video in the description box. There were several pretty colors to choose from, but I ended up picking the pure white color since it was ready to go with the two day shipping and I thought the white would look best against our beige, brown, gray siding. Up close, the texture looks and feels just like real concrete. This has to be one of my favorite budget friendly, but still high end looking finds from Amazon. To avoid filling the entire planters up with dirt, I bought these planner inserts which are working really well for the two larger planters. I know you can use things like crushed cans or recyclables to fill planters up, but I didn't have enough of those, and these inserts are just really easy to use. I just put some landscape fabric over the inserts and then planted the flowers on top of them. While I worked on the flowers, Brandon wrapped up the porch cleaning with one final power wash and rinsing off the pea gravel. Sure enough, he was right and it is cleaning up really well. It's looking so much lighter and less red and dirty, thankfully. I need to figure out how to arrange our new planters and flowers on our front porch. Not sure if I want them here at the front of the steps or on each side of the door. Okay, so I think for me to figure this out, I need to go ahead and put the doormats down to see what looks best with the planters as far as the doormat size goes. And I ordered a few different doormat options because I wasn't sure what I would like. So I'm gonna test those out. 
Originally, I wanted to reuse our old front doormat, but after power washing it, it still looked really worn out. So I ended up buying the same one to replace it since I really love the look of this doormat and it's held up really well for the past five years. I also bought two different styles of outdoor rugs to test out and layer underneath of the doormat. I think this black and white rug isn't wide enough. I'm really loving this brown striped rug. I'll link it below this video along with my doormat. So I feel like with this really large layering doormat, I need to keep the planters up here. Otherwise the planters might sit funny sitting on the edge of it. So I can either do it like this or I could just get rid of the second layering doormat and just do the smaller one. Not sure what to do. After trying a few different arrangements out, I think I'm going to stick with the planners in front of the two layered rugs. Brandon is blowing all of the dirt off one more time before the final reveal. Our front porch is so much more enjoyable now to use on a daily basis and it has really enhanced our curb appeal. For about $500 and two days worth of work, it was totally worth it. I can't wait to decorate our front porch now for the fall and holidays. Make sure to subscribe and turn those notifications on so you don't miss any of my future projects. Thank you so much for watching.